Hi, this is David at TED IELTS, and today I want to teach you some vocabulary that can help you in your next IELTS exam. We're going to look at the topic of health, which is something that could occur in any part of the test, and is also something that you should be able to talk about if you go abroad to work, study, or travel. As always, this video is divided into chapters, which you can see on the timeline below. Feel free to jump forward or backwards to the parts that interest you most. However, I do recommend watching the whole video. Also, there are subtitles that you can turn on if you struggle to understand me. Right, let's begin the lesson. In the IELTS exam, there are numerous topics that appear. These are typically topics that are common in daily life for the majority of people. For example, you often get questions about technology, sport, friends, transport, and music. You would never be asked about molecular biology or quantum physics. That's because IELTS is essentially just an English test and it requires no specialist knowledge. One common topic is health. This appears because almost all human beings have a little knowledge to share and can form opinions on the subject. Technically, the topic of health could arise in any part of the exam – speaking, writing, reading, or listening. However, note that it would always be a fairly general topic. You would never be asked to discuss your personal health issues, and you would never be expected to have an advanced knowledge of medicine or anatomy. Thus, in the speaking test, the questions would more than likely be ones related to society. This is actually quite similar to the ideas raised in IELTS Writing Task 2, where you might have to talk about society and health, or the government's role in preventing health problems. Considering that, we're now going to move on to look at some appropriate vocabulary to help you talk about health in IELTS. First of all, let's think about the types of words that we would realistically need to know to do well in IELTS. Obviously, the more you know, the better. However, you don't need to have an expert understanding of immune systems or virology, for example. Instead, it's useful to have a basic knowledge of words related to human anatomy, common illnesses, common medicines or medical treatments, and things that threaten people's health. These are things that almost everyone should be able to talk about at a very basic level, so let's look at each of them in turn and discuss some useful vocabulary. The word anatomy means parts of the body. Of course, you don't need to know all of them, but knowing a range of common words is helpful. Also, keep in mind that you may need words that go beyond the basic and superficial, so look up vocabulary referring to both interior and exterior anatomy. Here are a few that you definitely should know. Firstly, we ought to know the brain, which is encased in the skull. Similarly, you should know the heart and the lungs. It is worth knowing some of their functions, too. You should be able to explain that the heart pumps blood around the body and the lungs take in oxygen when we breathe. Other vital vocabulary includes the stomach and the kidneys and the liver. Beyond that, interior body parts may be useful to know, but they are definitely non-essential in terms of vocabulary. As for exterior parts, you really ought to remember the things you were taught in primary school. Remember songs like Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes? Well, you should know that, but also think beyond that and learn to be specific. We have hands and fingers, feet and toes. Learn the joints like knees, elbows, ankles and wrists. All of these could be useful, even in other topics like sports. Finally, as the topic of health could arise in almost any part of the test, you don't need to know just how to spell these words, but pronounce them as well. Pay particular attention to tricky words like mouth. For many English learners, the th sound at the end of this word is very hard to say, and they confuse the words mouth and mouse. As the subject of health often entails some discussion of health problems, it is worth knowing various illnesses so that you can talk about them. 
One common way that this occurs is in IELTS writing task 2, where you frequently have to mention the effects of pollution, stress, fast food or sedentary lifestyles. In such cases it is helpful to know illnesses and diseases. For example, when talking about air pollution, you might mention lung cancer, respiratory problems or strokes. When talking about fast food and sedentary lifestyles, you could talk about obesity, diabetes and heart disease. When talking about issues in the workplace, perhaps you might discuss stress, depression or anxiety. The list is endless. It totally depends on you and your ideas, but it is worth knowing some common illnesses that you can mention. If you don't know the exact name of an illness, don't worry. Instead of naming it, you can just describe it. Few people would know the term chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, but you could easily replace it with lung disease or lung problems. Finally, be careful when discussing mental health issues. The language surrounding this evolves quickly. It's best not to talk about mental disease or to use old words like crazy or mad. These are considered quite offensive. If you know a specific condition, use the name, and if you don't, then you can say mental health issue. According to the UK's Mental Health Foundation, we should also avoid saying mentally ill. I'll post a link to their article on mental health terminology down below, as it's quite useful. Again, most IELTS candidates are not doctors and so it is unreasonable ex to expect them to know all about medicines and medical treatments. However, it is definitely worth knowing some basic terms. Certainly you should be familiar with words like surgery, medication, pills, rest and painkillers. For each of these categories it would also be useful to know a few examples. You don't need to know the specific names of surgeries, but being able to put together body parts and this word is quite handy, such as heart surgery or brain surgery. Then of course there's plastic surgery, which is, which is also known as cosmetic surgery. As for medications, you might want to learn a few common types like ibuprofen or paracetamol. Again, this could help you in IELTS, but also in daily life if you decide to move to an English-speaking country. However, don't worry about learning lots of different vocabulary for this area. Just knowing the basics is enough, and you can always use language to avoid specific terminology. For example, surgery to fix a heart problem would be a fine alternative to open heart surgery. Try to learn related groups of words too. You should know the word hospital, but also keep in mind that hospitalize is a verb. For example, she was hospitalized after a bad accident. Learn collocations as well. We can say perform surgery, undergo surgery and need surgery. Very occasionally, you might encounter the topic of alternative medicine. Again, this could theoretically appear in any of the four parts of the test, so be aware of the basic vocabulary for this. We typically use alternative medicine for that which is not really a part of conventional medicine. In other words, it has not been proven effective by the scientific method. This might include traditional medicines, folk medicines and practices like homeopathy and acupuncture. Finally, when we talk about medicine in English, we usually say take medicine or take painkillers. I know that in other languages people say eat or drink medicine but this is not correct in English. When the topic of health comes up in IELTS, it is often connected to the idea of things that threaten people's health. I've frequently encountered essay questions about pollution, fast food, traffic, modern lifestyles and so on, all of which suggest the idea of people getting sick or risking an early death. Thus, you should be prepared to talk about all of these. Common expressions in this area include these ones. You also need to be able to connect these issues to their related health problems. For example, nowadays many people have unhealthy diets which puts them at risk of heart disease, obesity and diabetes. Air pollution is a common problem in cities around the world causing various respiratory problems such as lung cancer. The phrases put at risk and cause are very useful here for explaining the relationship between the risk 
and the result. Again, the language you need here depends on your own ideas, but think about common issues in daily life. Traffic accidents are sadly very common around the world, and we should be prepared to talk about them. Thus, we ought to know the words crash and car crash. We should know the phrase run over, meaning that a pedestrian is hit by a car. Common mistakes here include using crush and smash, which we do not use in describing car accidents. Health is something that affects us all, and so it is a common topic in IELTS. As I've said already, you don't need to be a doctor to talk about it, but you should have a knowledge of basic health-related vocabulary. By learning words related to body parts, health problems, medical treatments, and threats to our health, we can prepare ourselves for the exam and hopefully get on track for a great IELTS score.